Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. As you might know, the story trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla has been released and with that, along with a new interview released by Ubisoft, a whole new bunch of information has been delivered to the fans, especially those who were waiting for Assassin's slash Hidden Ones themed content. As a matter of fact, through this trailer we have finally met Basim, one of the newly announced members of the Hidden Ones and have also gotten confirmation about Sigurd Styrbjörnsson, Eivor's stepbrother and the person who actually gifted them the Hidden Blade, but that wasn't all. The trailer also showed the various kings and rulers of England, including but not limited to Alfred of Wessex, along with several vistas of both Norway and England and even Eivor's settlement. Lastly, we got to know more about the Order of the Ancients and their potential tie to an ancient Roman cult, and a mysterious comment by narrative director Darby McDevitt about the potential existence of multiple endings in the game. Thus, without waiting any longer, let's delve into the trailer. Let's start from Sigurd. We can now confirm that this character, which we had already seen in past trailers, is Sigurd Styrbjörnsson, Eivor's stepbrother. As a matter of fact, it appears that Eivor's actual parents died while they were pretty young, which is why they were taken in by Sigurd's father, who is or was a king, King Styrbjörn or Fornberg. As it was tradition among the Vikings, Eivor was raised and considered exactly as Styrbjörn's child through and through, and as they were five years younger than Sigurd, they were meant to be Sigurd's right hand while he was expected to go on and be a king and lead Styrbjörn's clan, a sort of destiny that seems to be hinted at in the previews for the upcoming comic Song of Glory. Sigurd will be proud and charismatic, but apparently there will also be a darker side to him that might clash with Eivor at some point. What is extremely interesting here is that Sigurd will be the point of contact with the Hidden Ones, as while being in the journey that is going to be mentioned in the Song of Glory comic, he will meet them in Constantinople, a potential callback to Ezio Auditore going to Constantinople in Assassin's Creed Revelations, and will learn of their customs in there, especially of the Hidden Blade, which he will be particularly interested in. What we see in the trailer is Sigurd going back to Norway in what we can assume to be Fornberg, Styrbjörn's village, bringing with him two hidden ones. Before we move on to them and keeping to Sigurd, we also know that it is him that will gift Eivor the hidden blade, as that was a custom in the Norse culture as mentioned in the interview with MacDevitt, which was a way to show the respect that he has for his brother or sister. The two Hidden Ones, on the other hand, might have a different opinion about the exchange, as Darby played coy about what they might think of it. Sigurd also has a wife, Ranvi, who was waiting for him at home in Fornberg, and who, after moving to England, at least in the trailer, is showing the map of the kingdoms to both her husband and Eivor, and if you pay attention, this is a very similar scene to what we saw in the gameplay overview trailer for the game, even though back then it seems like it was an early or customizable version of her. Considering that Ranvi is the same character that shows the player the various areas and regions in England on the Alliance map, she may very well be the war chieftain that Eivor can consult while being in the settlement. Moving on to possibly the main topic of the trailer, at least for the hardcore fans, we are finally able to have a proper look at the Hidden Ones in Valhalla. As mentioned before, it seems that two Hidden Ones are getting to Fornberg with Sigurd. The more prominent one is called Basim, and while we don't know much about the second one, apart from him using a scimitar as his melee weapon of choice, they have both already appeared in the previous trailers for the game. Looking at Basim, both in the trailer and in the newly released renders, we see that he is wearing the hidden blade underneath his left arm, he doesn't have the ring finger on the left hand, and he is wearing robes that clearly resemble those of the assassins from Assassin's Creed 1, possibly making these members of the hidden ones from Constantinople the precursor of the Levantine assassins. 
Basim is also a pretty important figure throughout the trailer, as he is the one being intrigued by Eivor at the beginning, depicting him as orphan and sibling, and warrior and poet, but also because he is able to tell a lot about himself just from a single nod. In fact, when Sigurd says that the clan cannot stay in Norway because that would cause more wars, he just nods and smiles, showing that he not only agrees with him, but maybe even manipulated him into thinking so, because the Hidden Ones might have other plans than just the prosperity of Eyward and Sigurd's clan. As a matter of fact, later in the trailer Basim warns Eivor about the darkness being hidden within England's lands, which is very likely to be the Order of the Ancients, and that is bound to England's destiny but also to Eivor's. That's likely the other purpose of Basim wanting the Vikings to reach England, so that he might convince or maybe manipulate them into helping him and the other hidden one fighting the Order of the Ancients, as we'll see later in the video. Before we move on, and keeping to the Hidden Ones, the trailer also showed this old and ruined building with several Assassin slash Hidden Ones banners. While it is very unlikely that Eivor goes to Constantinople and visits the Hidden Ones there, it's much more likely that these might be the remains of the Hidden Ones journey to Britain during the Roman times, as mentioned by Darby in JV's interview, meaning that there's a chance that fans might actually get to look for Hidden Ones themed buildings in the game world. The trailer also showed a few of the various rulers and kings in England through Randvi's voice. The most visible one is obviously King Alfred of Wessex, the only kingdom in England to successfully hold its own against the Viking invasions. In the interview by Ubisoft, Darby mentioned that Alfred is a proud and pious man, who is beset not only by Vikings, but also by people within his own court, who would rather see someone else in power. That sounds pretty temporary, doesn't it? True to its history, the coat of arms of Wessex is shown in the trailer in more than one occasion, not only when Alfred is around, but also to show its warriors. Next, we have other kings that are shown, and based on our hypothesis, this one might be Guthrum, the Viking king of East Anglia from 879 to 890 BCE. What makes us believe that this is Guthrum is that he is wearing Viking clothes, but there are crosses surrounding him. As a matter of fact, historically Guthrum was defeated in the famous battle at Edgington in 878 by Alfred of Wessex, who forced him to surrender and later to get baptized before pushing him back to East Anglia. This other king is the King of Mercia, as the coat of arms of such kingdom clearly showed the double-headed eagle. In this case, considering the time frame for the game, this could be Burgred of Mercia, who was deposed by the Vikings in 874, or Seowulf II, who succeeded him. Finally, we have other kinds of rulers. These are the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok, the legendary figure who evaded England 10 years prior to the events of the game and was killed by the Mercian king Ella. During the events of the game, Ragnar's sons, Ivar, Abba and Halfdan have been in England for over 5 years and have vowed revenge on the kingdoms and men who have murdered their father. Each of them will have a unique and compelling personality, according to MacDavid. Ivar will be wild and unpredictable, Abba will be steady with dreams of a pacified England for Danes and Saxons alike, while Halfdan will be a kingly figure, and rightfully so, considering that historically he was ruler of Northumbria for two years. The trailer also showcased a lot of vistas from the game. First we were able to see what we believe to be Fornberg, Sigurd and Eivor's village in Norway, and the various Viking buildings and inhabitants that it contains. Then the trailer showed some beautiful English landscapes, from Stonehenge to Lincoln, from a few shots containing ruins of Roman aqueducts in the background to a huge city in the distance, which in our opinion could be Winchester. Finally, the video showcased much more of the settlement, which we surmised in a previous video to be called Ravensthorpe. In fact, we can see it both from far away, then while Eivor walks through his clan members, and even during a banquet, but that seems to be short-lived. 
In fact, the many attacks on the various kingdoms shown in the trailer and you can just see from the coat of arms that Eivor will attack at least some fortresses in Wessex and Mercia will bring back some Mercian forces at the settlement's doorsteps. We do wonder if this is an actual mechanic in the game where not only players can raid outposts but can also be raided by Saxon troops. Before we get into the Order of the Ancients, the other star of the shows for hardcore fans, we have some more miscellaneous news coming from the trailer and the interview by Ubisoft. For a few seconds, the trailer showcased some more social stealth, which is always nice to see, and what better place to show some more glimpses of it than a trailer dedicated partly to the hidden ones? Next, we now know that the alliances in the game will not be governed by a game system. Instead, they will be narrative based, and in McDavid's words, they will be fixed by the stories that are being told, as they do rely on historical characters and events. The trailer also indirectly showed some customization for Eivor's beard and hair, as in different shots, he showed different styles. Granted, some of them might be story based, considering his decision to follow his brother to England, but still, this is a very nice first look into the system anyway. Lastly, in the Ubisoft interview, McDavid was asked about the existence of multiple endings in the game. He obviously did not answer, but he did say, quote unquote, I will say that there are multiple fascinating pathways throughout our epic tale, a story modeled after the Norse sagas of old in which men and women fought hard against fate, eager to forge their own path, yet always failing, time and time again. Could this be a narrative explanation to having multiple endings in the game while still making it canon that Eivor, whatever the ending, ultimately failed or achieved their purpose in their journey? Let us know your opinions in the comments below. Finally, the trailer also potentially showed some members of the Order of the Ancients. Before we get into that though, we now know, through Darby once again, that the Order of the Ancients in Valhalla have overtaken England with the aim of spreading their retrograde views. It is interesting that the narrative director mentioned their retrograde views, stating that they are somewhat different from the ones of the Templars as we know them today, because in the trailer, the unknowable threat mentioned by Basim seems to be based on a cult that dates back to the ancient Romans. In fact, the trailer shows three figures worshipping the statue of a god killing a bull who are very likely to be members of the Order of the Ancients. In terms of iconography though, the statue, as mentioned to us by fan xmasti 70 is a direct link to the Mithraism, the Roman cult of god Mithras, which had been centered in ancient Rome and extended as far as Roman Africa but also to Roman Britain and was very popular among the Imperial Roman army. The iconic scenes of Mithras show him being born from a rock, slaughtering a bull and sharing a banquet with the god Sol, which represents the sun. As mentioned by Wikipedia, the worshippers of Mithra had a complex system of seven grades of initiation and communal ritual meals and met in underground temples, which is what we're seeing here. Having the Order of the Ancients tied to an ancient Roman cult is also pretty interesting here, as it is very consistent with what we mentioned earlier about the Hidden Ones and the Order of the Ancients reaching England along with the expansion of the Roman Empire and staying there for centuries, so it's going to be very interesting to see how that will play out in the game. And that was it for today's video. The trailer and the interview contained a huge load of information and we are pretty happy we could share with you everything we could glean from it. Do you agree or disagree with some of the conclusions that we reached? Which is the piece of news that interested you the most? As usual, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on so you don't miss any of our future updates. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.